are here. Other folks will be joining um, in progress. Uh, Search Wizards is very pleased and honored to introduce you to Costa as our March webinar presenter today. Many of our consultants have informed me that they know either know Dean personally or know him through their networking. Uh, Dean has created, planned, and organized staffing, sourcing, and recruiting programs for a diverse clientele, including the U.S. Army and corporations like Lockheed Martin, Microsoft, Avanade, Hewlett Packard, as well as uh, other places like the Sourcing Institute and Nupercon. Dean's specialties and expertise include military and veteran staffing, sourcing research, sourcing research and architecture, uh, staffing including full cycle, lean, and mobile. Dean was named number one in the HRE's top 25 online influencers in recruiting for the year 2012 and has a very impressive record of exceeding hiring goals and metrics everywhere he's been. Uh, Dean's truly regarded as one of our industry's leaders in cutting edge technologies and is considered a staffing thought leader. So with that uh, said, Dean, I'd love to turn this over to you. Welcome and thank you again for coming. Thank you. Uh... You know, it's really weird to always hear people say stuff like that about you. Um, so long story short, uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I tend to go pretty quick because I want to show you as much as I can. And I have some really cool things I'm going to show you guys today. Um, so I'm going to start. First of all, if you guys have questions, raise your hand, yell, whatever it takes to get my attention. Normally, in a, when, when I'm in person, I tell people to throw stuff at me if they can't get my attention, but mm -hmm. that wouldn't work here, so we won't be throwing anything. Uh, so we're going to start out pretty simple. Um, some of these tools you may know, some you may not. Um, most of you all know that Connectify was recently bought by LinkedIn. Well, actually, not recently, about a month, I have two months ago for $100 million. And everybody's waiting for what they believe will be the big um, drop of LinkedIn, just like LinkedIn's done with almost every other tool that it had. So I'm going to start by showing you two or three tools that can help replace LinkedIn that are either free or might as well be free. And the first one I'm going to show you is right here on the screen, and it's already done its job. It's called Context Scout, and it sits right here. And as you can see, as it relates to this particular gentleman, Jorgen Polson, uh, it's found all this info as far as social sites, it found it, his email address right there, and then it found a whole bunch of other sites that uh, you can find information with. Now, Context Scout gives you three per day free, and then the rest you pay for, it's very cheap. But here's the interesting part. If I had already, if I had already used my free ones, I would still see everything I see here, but the thing would be is these would be grayed out, and I couldn't click on them. Now, this is me. I don't care if I can click on him or not. As long as I know that he's got a Facebook page, I can find that myself. <laughs> so graying him out is great. It just means I can't click on him, but it doesn't stop me from finding him. So the information is still going to be there, and that's what makes this such a cool tool. And the fact that it sits in the middle rather than on the right or on the left or anything also makes it a really cool tool. It is a Chrome extension. You can download it from for free. And if you contact, once you download it, if you contact the person and tell them you heard it from me, they're probably going to give you more than three free a day. They're probably going to give you something like 20 a day for free. Um, really cool tool and definitely a replacement for Connectifier in that, you know, it just shows you the stuff you need on LinkedIn. Now, the downside to it is it pretty much only does work on LinkedIn, which is why we're going to show you another tool, which I call it uh, an oldie that's been redone and is now a goodie. Um, for those of you that don't recall, 360 Social way back in the day was a tool that existed and showed you information, but it was kind of really limited on what it showed. It was like really basic, almost the same stuff you would see on LinkedIn itself. Well, it's back and it's 100% free and it's better than ever. And it sits up here and when you push on it, it opens up and look at all this information. It's still finding on Jorgen, phone number, email address, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Apiro, Apiro, excuse me, Discus, Facebook, Gravitar. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on. And as you can see, I mean, it's finding a boat. And I can tell you for a fact, this is a lot more than what Connectifier finds on them. And this is 100% free. This is a phenomenal tool. This is my new go-to tool when it comes to people aggregating, even before Connectifier, because it just shows. And it works in almost every place. Here's Twitter, me. Look at all the information it finds on me in Twitter, out of Twitter. 
It'll work virtually. I have yet to find a social site. It does not work. Now, it sits up here. When it's green, it, find, it gives you a number and it tells you and it found stuff. If it's red, you don't, it means it couldn't find anything. Connectfire doesn't always find anything either. I mean, Connectfire is sitting right is sitting right here, and I don't even think I yeah okay. It found me in Twitter, but it doesn't find me in Facebook. But Three Six Social does find me in Facebook. It is a phenomenal tool. It is free. It's in the Chrome Store, and highly recommend you download it. Now, what I would do though is when you find it in the Chrome Store. Don't download the Chrome Store version. Instead, go to the website and download it from there because they're updating it more regularly from there than the Chrome Store. The Chrome Store, you have to go through 20 hurdles to get anything to be put on it and updated. So a lot of times people are updating it on their site first and then it won't update on the store for three weeks or so because you know Google is taking a lot of time to, uh, to validate things. Um, so before I move on, I've shown you these two tools and, and everything. Are there any questions? How many of you all already knew about both these tools? I'm not seeing anything, so I'm assuming nobody or nobody's interested in saying anything. So we'll move on. Now, the next tool we're going to talk about is Lucia. It's brand new. It's literally a week old. Now, before I go on, I got to tell you with all these people aggregators, make sure before you add them, you read everything they say. You read any fine print, any um, anything about the way they work and everything. Because if they're free, you're, you're giving something to get something. A lot of these people aggregator tools, if you're going to go like connect by early in the day, if you wanted access to it for free, you had to link it up to LinkedIn, which then means they could see all your connections. Now, me personally, I don't really care. It's LinkedIn. I mean, you can find all my connections. I don't hide them. Um, I did never hooked it up to my Gmail because that's something different. They couldn't see those. Um, so Lucia sits here and uh, I have to sign in and um, once I do, it's going to go ahead and find contact information. Now it only works in LinkedIn and it's going to find contact information. Now it looks to find personal contact information first. And then, and as you can see, it found here's his personal email and his phone number. It sits right here. You get certain number free and then anything beyond that you have to pay for. It does sit here. You see where it says connect to Gmail? I have not connected it. And the reason I have not connected it because when you look at its terms, when you, when you upload it from the store, there's a place where it says terms. It tells you it is going to connect with you. It's going to look for all your, you know, like in LinkedIn, it's going to look at all your connections. It's going to add the connections to its database. I mean, it's going to do that. And so it tells you up front. So you've got to decide, is it worth it to you? To me, right now, all it's doing is looking at my LinkedIn connections and adding it. I don't really care because it, you can find that for free. I don't hide it from anybody. Anybody wants to find my LinkedIn connections, it's not hard to do. You know, just search for, you know, it's an easy search in LinkedIn. Uh, I have not connected my Gmail because there are people in my Gmail address book I don't want to share. So that's why I won't connect it. Dean, can I chime in just a second? This is Dan, folks. If you are recent joiners, um, it shows me as Autumn. Dean has expressed the desire that if you folks have questions, he'd rather take them as they come up than toward the end based on a uh, a shortage of time we may have so feel free to unmute and jump in when you can or as David did uh, David asked a question everybody will get the deck and we'll get the slides next week when they're available but please yeah. feel free to jump in whenever you you can Dean does not mind being interrupted yeah the, and, and the other reason to do that is because I don't, I don't want you to wait till the end and then ask me about one of the first tools I showed and I have to go all the way backtrack through it because we're gonna this is the easy stuff the simple stuff. We're going to get into some much more intricate stuff here in a few minutes. So I'm not going to want to bounce all the way back to show this stuff if possible. Um, so that's Lucia. Uh, I like it. It's a good tool. It does find, when it finds stuff, it finds personal contact info. And so I really like it. Uh, but again, it's, it's like any people I get, you're going to give something to get it. And what you're going to give is you're going to give them access to your LinkedIn network, which to me, like I said, it's not a big deal. You've done it for ConnectFire. You've done it for profit. You've done it for every social aggregator out there. So well, is it really, you know, it's not that big a deal. This stuff's public. So before I move on to the next tool, and we've only got one more tool before we're going to get into some very intriguing stuff, are there any questions about any of these people out there? The big key here is these are all free or free to a point. 
And, they, and, and in my mind, with what's going on with Connectifier, they will do a good job of replacing it. Profit is another one. You guys all know about it by now. And as you can see, Profit does a decent job of finding information as well. Um, but 360 Social found more. Um, and Lucia found a personal phone number and personal email, which is something that Profit didn't find. But something that... Um, 360 Social found the phone number, just didn't find the other email, just only found the one email. Um, but you can bet that th that other information is available on one of these plethora of social sites that have found on Jorgen. Now, before I move on, I want to show you something real quick, just so you guys understand just how quick some of these tools update info. My son, Jeremy, just recently got his first recruiting gig. He has literally only had a LinkedIn account for about two and a half weeks, not very long. Um, and um, and, and everything. So um, as you can see, he's already, I mean, these tools are already finding a plother of information about the kid. And he only just put this account up recently. Here's his LinkedIn, his Facebook, his email, personal, by the way, his, his, uh, his uh, office number. It looks like 330614. That's actually his old cell phone. He's got a new cell phone number. So I, so, um, but right now this will go to it. I mean, so these tools work pretty good. They, they're pretty darn quick with how, how quick they get you information. And just to compare, so you see it, here's what Connectifier found on him. Nothing. So Connectifier found nothing, but, but Contact Scout and 36 Social found stuff. So that just goes to show you that some of these tools are even better than Connectifier in a lot of ways. So with that, we're going to go on to, unless there's questions, some of the more intriguing things. Uh, one of the first ones is going to be uh, a simple tool that I like a lot called Bool. Bool is one of the most simple Boolean generating tools I've seen. A lot of times I go here just to make my start of my string and then I add stuff to make it more interesting, more complicated. Uh, really easy to use. Um, so if I'm going to do an and thing, I'm going to do Java and then I'm going to do and and I'm going to do developer and Seattle because that's where I, whoops, excuse me, let me get in here, Seattle. And then I'm going to build my string, simple string, and then I can search. Now right now I have it set to either, you can go Google or Bing. You can have it search specific sites, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, or none. You can even have it look for specific file types. So uh, as an example, I'm going to look for a PDF for now. And we're going to go ahead and rebuild the string one more time so it puts the file type in, and we're going to search. And what it's going to do is automatically open the search. And there you are. Uh, people who live in Seattle who have Java developer in their profile, and these are PDFs. And it's a quick, simple thing. And for me, when I look at this, I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And if I want to make it more intricate, like maybe take off Seattle and put in a zip code range or something like that, I can. It's real simple to do. But it gives me the quick, basic start. Now, is this exactly the way I would do it? No. Uh, we don't really need the brackets, to be quite honest with you. But the brackets being there don't really do anything. So it doesn't bother me one way or the other. Um, if I was going to x-ray into a site, obviously there'd be a site command in here or whatever. But what I like about it is, as you can see, it keeps them. You can actually save your strings. It says save strings. I haven't saved any. Um, and you can act, or you can clear them so they'll be listed here if I want to list them. I haven't done any of that because I'm not interested in doing any of that. So let, let's, as an example, add the LinkedIn thing. Let's build the string again. And see, there it just added site command. Everything else is there, and we're going to search this one. And as you can see, it just opens another one. And now you're, you've done a site search into LinkedIn looking for people who live in Seattle who are Java developers. Now, what I would do here, and this is something I wasn't going to originally say, but I'm going to say it now just because I love doing this one, is I would do this. I would add gmail.com. Now, why would I do that? Because now all my results have Gmail email addresses. I don't need to use LinkedIn anymore. I can now contact them directly. There are 26 email domains that 95% of all Americans have an email address associated with it. Gmail is the most common. There's Outlook, Hotmail, and a whole bunch of them. I'll show you more about that a little bit later. But this is what I would do to it. So it got me here quickly, and then I just had this, so I had nothing but this. What I would do from here, if I wanted to contact everybody, is I would use a scraping program, which I was going to show later, but I'll show it right now. So I'll use a scraper program. This particular one is called Data Scraper. And what I would do here as soon as it opens up. I have a lot of extensions, so sometimes opening these things up can take some time. Um, and let's try this again. 
and wait for it to open. Unless it's being stupid. Okay, it's being stupid. So here's another way to do it. I'll just do it the old fashioned way. Not the way I enjoy doing it, but we'll do it anyway. I'll just highlight this one and go down here to scrape similar and let scrape similar find all the information for me, which is including their Gmails. I see every one of them has a Gmail and this can be downloaded as a uh, export to Google Docs or download it as a CSV, upload into your ATS, do whatever you want. But all of the information's here, their name, the URL, their Gmail address, everything. Quick, painless, and easy. So I was gonna show you that later. I'm not sure what's going on with Data Scraper. I'm gonna have to figure that out later. So are there any questions before I move on? Because we're about to get into the really interesting things. All right, Block Spring. For those of you that don't know, APIs are very common out there. And API stands for Application Program Interface. Basically, it's routine protocols, um, a way to communicate between your front end and the back end behind it. You know, when you do a call on LinkedIn, that's the front end. There's a database behind it, and the information you got to get from the front end to the database, and that's what these things do. These are calls that tell it what you want to do. All of these tools here, all of these sites are different sites that have APIs involved. Blockspring has made it so you no longer have to program to use the API calls. It, they do it all for you. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you an example of, of how this works. Um, as you can see, there's a boatload of them in here and I'm not gonna go through them all. Some are better than others. So what I'm gonna do is Blockspring works within Google Sheets. This is Google, um, Docs, we're gonna go into Google Sheets, and as soon as we get in there, I'm gonna show you exactly where Blockspring sits and how to use it. So I'm gonna go into this untitled spreadsheet, um, rather than creating a new one, and we're gonna wait. Now, Google Sheets, like Chrome, like most of Google's products, has the ability to add things called add-ons. These are tools that can extend the capability. And as you see, I have a boatload of them. Blockspring is right here. And I'm gonna open Blockspring, and we're gonna wait a second or two, and it's gonna open over here. This is the console um, for Blockspring, and I'm gonna sign in. Um, gonna give it a second or two to get me signed in, and it's gonna be stupid. And make me sign in. I recently um, reinstalled Chrome to clean it up a little bit, so that's why I'm having to sign back in again to some of these tools. Hooray, yay. This time you don't see every day, hooray. All right, so what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna go here and we're gonna, and here are all those same blocks that you saw before. These are called blocks. These are basically all the different API choices that you have available to you. So what I'm gonna do to show you one particular one is I'm gonna use Glassdoor's API and I'm gonna do some searching. This would be something you would do mainly as a way of um, just double checking what's going on so, um, as far as competitors in your place and, or whatever the case may be. Um, we're gonna go ahead um, and get job counts by employer. We're gonna select a parameter and I'm gonna just do employee, employer name and we're gonna put in Boeing. And we're gonna go ahead, we've got Boeing, and we're gonna insert. And basically what's going on is it's gonna go out there and it's searching, and we're gonna run it, and look at this. This is Boeing right there. They have 600, and, oh, excuse me, I take that back. They have 3,522 jobs out there. That's a boatload of jobs. And as you can see, not only did it call up Boeing, but it called up a lot of competitors of Boeing, so you can get an idea how it compares to other people, like Northrop Grumman's got 2736. It brought up all that information, quick, painless, and easy. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, great, what does that really do for me? But here's the reality of the situation. Um, if you were to go back to it, you could actually break it down by the title of the job, like developer. So let's say you have to find a developer and you're competing with uh, Boeing in the area and you have to find developer, you get to see how many developer jobs they have. Now, what can this tell you? Number one, it can tell you if they're gonna be somebody you have to compete with. Number two, the more they have, the odds are that also means the harder they are, they, the harder they are to find, which can give you a really good idea of what's going on. And remind you, this is only a simple, the, one of the simple API calls that you can do. There are some in here that are much more intricate. It can show you a lot more information. Uh, and the reason I use simple ones is because I didn't want to take, 
take a lot of time, but as you can see, you can get employer search, so you can get information about employers, you can get job counts by city, so if you're getting ready to bid on a project in the city, you can get an idea what everybody else is looking for, and if you're looking for a developer and there's 5,000 other developer jobs in that area, that tells you something. Tells you it's going to be hard. You're going to have to compete. Tells you it may, they may be hard to find. Job counts by county. Job counts by employer. Job counts by state. Job counts by title. I mean, so much information that can be gleaned using this, and it's a it's an API call, and it and they make it simple. It used to be you'd have to be able to program to get this info. Now it's all simple and easy for you. Um, before I move on, are there any other questions? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about some of the other things that you can do. Um, and if there are no more questions, so as you can see, if there are a boatload of choices of, of blocks you can use. There's one down here for Twitter, uh, right here. In that one, you can find people on Twitter. It is a real simple way to find people on Twitter. I mean, you can literally say people and, and say they're talking about Java development and everybody who's talking about it will pop up, all the Twitter handles, with links directly to their Twitter profiles. So it's a way to source. Meetup, you can actually go there, look up groups, and find out all the members of that group. Um, email Hippo will validate email addresses for you. Uh, email Hippo sitting up here, up Email Hippo, Email Hippo, E, 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 Email. Yeah, right there. It'll validate an email address for you. Fled, Fedger is a company competitive intel site. You put in a company name, and it brings up all sorts of info on them, info that you can't find just anywhere. Full contact will deduce names from emails or from usernames. It'll find people by email, and I'm going to show you a little more about some of this a little bit later. I mean, there are just so many of them up here. There's about 98 to 100 different ones. Um, I've looked at them all, and probably about a third of them really, for staffing and sourcing, can really find some great info for you. I recommend you play with them and decide which ones work for you. Um, Here's a couple up here to give you an idea how scary they are that are actual visual rec recognition programs. So if I put in a picture, it will actually go out and look everywhere for information relating to that picture, including the people's name, their address, phone number, everything. It's really kind of scary, um, some of the stuff that you can do with some of these programs that um, are out there. Um, so are there any questions before I move on? Feel free, folks. Dean doesn't mind you jumping in now. You know, it's great for the okay, well, let me try to get some kind of feedback. Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Is this boring? And are you guys, do, do you guys getting something out of this? Am I, any kind of feedback at all would be good? Hi, it's Jerry. I don't know if you can hear me all right. Yeah, who is this? Uh, my name's Jerry. I work at Microsoft. Um, <laughs> yes. You are, uh, this is great, and, I'm, and I appreciate that we're gonna get the deck and things like that. It's a little fast, but it's, it's really great. I'm just wondering specifically how you got to this section where I'm seeing all of the Block Spring Console APIs on the right. Excellent. Okay, so I go, went up to add-ons. So right down here, in most of your cases, none of this is gonna be, you're gonna go to get add-ons. And it's like the Chrome store. It's going to be a store where you're going to see all these add-ons. Somewhere in here is BlockSpring. Somewhere in here is BlockSpring. I got to find it now, unfortunately. Well, there it is. And you add it. And then it will appear up here. And then I'll go to open. And it will open over here. And that's how simple it is. Perfect. And Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem at all. I, 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 that was a little quick, so I apologize for that. Um, any other questions? Because we're about to get into some really cool stuff here now. Even cooler than what I've already shown you. All right. Email Hunter. Email Hunter is a great one. It is right here. And it will allow you to email, search for emails by domain, search for emails, validate emails, all sorts of neat stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually search for emails by domain. And as you can see, I've already got Google here, so I'm not even gonna move from that. And I'm gonna go ahead, we've got our search parameters. Uh, we're gonna say get uh, first source, uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and insert. And what it's doing now, it's going out there and searching. Now, sometimes it can get a little weird, so we're gonna go ahead and, and be careful with this. Like, sometimes it'll do what it just did, give you an error, but don't worry about that. A lot, there's a lot of reasons why that could be happening. Um, so we're running it right now and we're going to let it do its thing. It's still running, completing one query 
Uh, let's see, is it still running or was it email search by name? Oh, okay, wait a minute, that was a different one. Let me run the search properly, I was running the wrong search. Okay, and it just gave, it's still running. Um, error of view blocks being. So what that means, sometimes that can mean a lot of different things. Sometimes it can mean that you need to have, you need to start over. Sometimes sheets get tied into one tool, one API, and you need to literally start over. So we're going to go ahead and start over. And what I'm going to do then, and I'm looking down all these sheets I have, just to make sure I already have one that looks really good for this tool. Okay, I don't. I'm going to actually start over and start with a fresh sheet. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't have to. And that's why I always double check. And in case you're wondering, there have been some changes to BlockSpring. Um, the way it's working now is a little bit different than the way it had been. Um, so I'm actually, um, and this is literally in the next, last day, so I'm actually working through them like you guys are to try to get them to work the right way now. But this tool is really, really, really cool in what it's going to be able to let us do. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how, to, how it works. Uh, and hopefully it'll help, help you guys. So I'm going to go back down to Email Hunter again. And it's connected. We're going to go back to a domain search. Um, I'm actually going to change this out of that into Apple, uh, apple.com. And uh, parameter-wise, let's see. Let's just get a page. Let's just do a page. And then we're going to – somebody's crumpling paper or something in the background. It's really hard to hear. So – Somebody's unmuted and is crumpling a lot of paper. There we go. It's a little quieter now. And so I'm going to run this. And it's preparing to run right now. And it's running the query. And we're getting an error for some reason. So let's find out why we're getting an error. Let's backtrack out of here. Uh, I'm not sure why it's giving me an error. It normally doesn't. Uh, but, 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 but. You know what we'll do? We'll do it a different way. I'll just go ahead and, and do it this way then because it could be – okay, so – if I ran this search in Apple, can you guys see this? I don't want to waste a lot of time reconnecting my API. My API probably got disconnected. This is what you end up getting. You end up getting apple.com, and it just goes out there and searches the entire uh, email domain for email addresses. And as you can see, it found a boatload of them. There's more than even what you see here. Um, and it found a boatload of them. The next question, of course, is how do you figure out who and what is where? And that's where Vibe comes in very, very, very handy. Vibe is a tool that looks at email addresses and try to bring you more information based on the email. And as you can see in this list, about the ninth one down says something to Murray, whatever it's Tom Numeri. And as you can see, I highlighted it and Vibe went out and found that his name is Tom Tumurray. He does indeed work at Apple. He actually has a Twitter handle and found information. This validates this particular person as being a good email for someone that works at Apple and somebody that we can now target if we enjoy targeting Apple people. And that's what that particular tool can do, Email Hunter. And then how Vibe, because it's all done on the web with um, with Google Sheets, Vibe works with. Vibe will work with any web-based tool. And that's why this particular tool works so well and why putting them together works so well. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to come off of this and I'm going to show you something. Uh, unless there's some more questions here, I'm going to show you something else that's really pretty cool that I think you guys will like. Uh, I'm going to have to – you see where it says request API? That tells me that my API needs to be reset. Basically, I haven't used it in a little bit, so I have to go back in and reset it. And that's why it's not working, so I don't want to waste a lot of time on it. Uh, I want to actually show you guys some really cool, some other things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out and I'm going to go back into Google Sheets and show you, uh, I'm putting a lot of tools together to make, to get some of this done. So I'm going to show you this email permeator. Um, we're just, just got to give it a minute. And as you can see with this email permeator, what it is, is an Excel spreadsheet, which I've now put in Google Sheets, which allows me to do this. As you can see, this is the top 26 most commonly, 27 most commonly used email domains that are out there. 95% of all Americans have an email associated with one of these. And what I've done is I went out there and I did some research and I found Travis McDee, who has a, uh, who's got a social site. That's a username on one of his social sites. So I know that people that use their username usually has an email address associated. Now, which one? I don't know. So I went ahead and created all of these. Now, once I've got them all, I have two ways to go about trying to figure out which one's right. Um, one 
is the what I call the slower. Old, I don't want to say old fashioned because it's the first. It's the way I did it at first. Uh, since then, I found an easier way, and I use an online editing program. This is called EditPad, and I take those names and I pop them in here. And then what I do is I highlight each one one by one, and I let Vibe go out and try to figure it out for me. And Vibe's looking up that one right there, and I believe if I remember correctly, it's not going to find anything uh, on that particular person. And nor am I going to go ahead and wait forever for it to do it because I already know it doesn't work, at least for that person. Now, that's the old-fashioned way of doing it. The new way of doing it, which is, again, this is all Google Sheets and all um, add-ons and extensions, is using full contact, which is another, um, it's, it's another tool that works from BlockSpring. And as you can see, I populated already all the different versions of his, and look what it did. It went out and validated the right one for me. It found that the Gmail is the correct email for him. I started with nothing more than his username. If I remember correctly, that's his username he uses on Twitter and GitHub. And I used this tool to create all my permutations. I then put it into EditPad. You had to go to EditPad first because if you try to go straight from one sheet to another, all you do is get all the different programming, all this stuff up here. You don't get the actual emails. So you, I went to EditPad. And then from EditPad, I went to this particular sheet, in, which is Enrich Emails, Full Contact, and put it in and ran it. And it went ahead and validated the right email, not me. It w did it all automatically. And I'm going to show you again how this works just so you guys can see it in live in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take out Travis, and I'm going to put in Search Authority, which is one of my usernames, assuming I can spell today. Search Authority. That looks right. And you see how it's populating all the permutations. I already know which one's right, obviously. I know my email. And now I'm going to stick it into EditPad. And I'm only sticking it into EditPad just so it's there. Um, I, like I said, I already know which one's right. And I'm sticking it in EditPad so I get just the emails. I don't get all the, all the formulas and everything to create the emails because that's a problem. And then I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to stick them in here. And then we're going to go ahead and go here. We're going to go down to, um, let's see, where is it? Email address extractor clear. Sometimes you got to find them. I've, I have a lot of them, so we got to figure out which one's which. It's not clear a bit. It is this one. Uh, we're going to open it. It should automatically open to the right one. If it doesn't, then you have to find it. Sometimes it, uh, yep, see, it already did. And we're going to go ahead and run the program. And it's preparing. And it's running. It's doing its thing. It's still running the queries. Now you see you got BlockSpring. So BlockSpring's got an error. And let's see here. So my problem right now is BlockSpring. I have to redo my BlockSpring API. It says it right there, request API. I have to update my API. What would have happened is it would have had an error for everything here except for the right one, which is this one here. That's what would have happened. I need to update all my APIs, evidently, which doesn't surprise me. Nothing surprises me with these tools. Sometimes you have to constantly update your APIs um, to get them to work right. See how it's trying to complete the query, but it's getting a block spring error? So that means I have to go ahead and update my API. But what you would have gotten if my, if my uh, API was updated is you would have gotten the results you saw before, which is um, where it showed you the results that where it showed you the one that actually came out being correct. And I'm sorry this isn't working. It was yesterday, but as you can see, they've done some updates to their API, and I have to go back into BlockSpring now and correct my APIs uh, because it's being kind of silly. But just to let you know, uh, the old way, give Vibe a second or two or three or four, however long it takes to work. Unfortunately, it can take a while. It's searching the entire net looking for me. And as you can see, it found that. Did I spell something? Oh, I misspelled it. That's why it's not working right. I misspelled search authority. God darn it. No wonder why. Now I don't feel so bad. Let's try that again now. There we go. That's what happens when English is not your first language. There we go. Now let's go back down to the right one and do it. That's me being dyslexic. There we go. See, 
that's what you get when you know it's right. You get a whole lot of information. And that could be why that maybe it's not the API itself that's not working. Maybe it's the, um, maybe it's the fact that none of the email addresses were correct. Let's try that again now. Let me see if it works now, if it gives me the same error. All right, let's run it. If it gives me the same error, that means I have to redo all my APIs in, in BlockSpring or at least do the main block. Nope, it didn't. There it goes. See, validated right there. So that was why it's because none of them were right. See how it validated it right there? Quick and easy. So one, if I didn't this way, I would have gone one by one by one and I would have gotten to the right one after two, four, six, seven of them. Doing it this way, it became automatic. It literally did it in seconds. Now, why is this important to you guys? If you guys can't find anything else, if you guys can't find information anywhere else, but you got a username, like I said, most people have an email address associated with the username. All you got to do is use the permeator to get the most common ones, put it into EditPad so you have just the emails, not the formulas, and stick it in, stick it in here and let it do the work for you. It just went out there and validated this particular one. You see, it still said error. It said error because none of these others are right. But it, the one that was right, it validated. Quick, painless, and easy. And, and I know I sound, I, sounds, I sound really excited and probably like a kid in a candy store. But to me, this is like a kid in a candy store. This is like really cool stuff. And this is stuff that's so hard to find because this is automated. Normally, you have to go one by one by one. This is automated. It does it all for you. And, and, and it's free. This is all free. None of this is something you have to pay for. So like I said, I'm sorry, it just, it, this is just me because this to me is some of the coolest stuff out there and because I know like at the last SourceCon, I presented on some of this stuff and nobody's, ever, nobody's seen this stuff before. And that's what to me is so cool about it. I love finding new toys that no one's ever played with before. So with that, unless there are questions, we're gonna move on to some more, some more play toys. And I'm gonna get my cat down. All right, so we've got about, 15 minutes and I've got a lot I want to show you guys. So I am going to, I need to know how many of you people use LinkedIn before I go any further. Cause I may actually skip what I'm about to do and show you some LinkedIn stuff. Raise your hand folks. If you use LinkedIn. And I don't, and, and I need to know specifically if you use LinkedIn recruiter as well, cause I have tricks for both. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to show you something. There is a, Chrome extension called Clearbit Connect. It works with Gmail. Um, I'm going to show you it real quick, and then I'm going to show you the LinkedIn stuff. Um, and, and like I said, we're not really going to get everything I want to show you today, but we're going to get a lot of it. Um, Clearbit Connect is kind of what Reportive used to be, what it was supposed to be. So as an example, if I open this email, and, and, and Clearbit Connect sits right there, by the way. This is Connect. See how it has my name? Well, here's what happens if I go down to the, to the email address down here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I have to open it. You see how it's showing my information here and my information here? If we come down here, it'll show raw, excuse me. Uh, what's Google Chrome doing? Google Chrome's being silly. Yeah, it's going to show Rob's information. Yeah, there, there's my information. That's what it's showing. Eventually, it'll show Rob's information. But here's some interesting things you can do with Clearbit with this tool. We're going to find emails. Now, this is in Gmail. Um, as you can see, I have this right here. Um, if you copy, once you get it, if you copy this, you no longer have to go through Gmail for it. You'll end up going right here. And you're probably wondering, why is this important? Well, we're going to go into apple.com and look at some of the emails it's found. But here's the thing, if I want an iOS developer, I put an iOS, uh, hang on, let me get back here, iOS. Look at the iOS people it found. Engineers, developers found one recruiter, don't care. Look at all those nice, pretty iOS developers that we can now go after. Let's see what information we can find them. Let's pick on Robert LeCroix. Oh, wow, look at that. I got his email address. I have his website. I have his Twitter handle. What it does is it scrapes their mail server for all the Apple email addresses it can find, marries them up to enough information to decide what they can do. So let's think about this for a minute. We've got about 15 iOS-oriented people here. Now, the bottom one is, a, is not a personal email. It's a... Um, 
uh, a group email. So basically it's where they send for MDM, whatever the heck MDM is. These are all personal emails. The recruiter you wouldn't want. So you're looking at 13 people that are, has something to do with iOS. Now, Let's see what happens if we add in the word developer. We need an iOS. Oh, wow, look at all those iOS developers that they have. Isn't that interesting? And I need an iOS developer. So let's see if we can find somebody. Let's try, oh, let's try Jasper. Oh, wow, look at that. I got his email address. Hmm. I now can contact that young Jedi and try to recruit him. Let's go to Karma Soto, whatever the name is. Karen, Karen Sota. Oh, wow, I got his email address. Hmm, cool. And remember, you have their email. Oh, let me get back into Karen Sota's again. Oops, what did I do? Oh, I'm going to his webpage. I don't want to go to his webpage. Let me get back to Clearbrick Connect. Uh, let's get back into Apple. Let's get back into iOS developer. Oops, spell it right, Dean. Developer. And let's get back into Karen Sota's and let's highlight Karen Sota and let's see what Vibe finds on Karen. Remember, web based, so we can still use Vibe and Connect 6 by Connect if active. The reason why it's not active is because Lucia and Connect 6 don't play nice. So they couldn't find it. That doesn't mean it's a bad email, it just means they couldn't find anything else about them. But it really doesn't matter because I have Karen Sota. And if I right click and I use my LinkedIn search tool, yes, this is a new tool that I'm showing you, it's a Chrome extension that allows you to search either basic or LinkedIn recruiter for people. And we're gonna go to Karin Sota. And we're gonna see what they, oh wow, look at that, senior, I, yep, he's definitely senior iOS Apple developer and he's definitely at uh, Apple and he's definitely in the Bay Area. I'm actually second level to him, which I didn't know. I can't keep track of all the people I'm connected to. I don't even bother trying anymore. And let's see now. So think about this. We started with this tool to find people. We then took, we got their email already. We then took it to LinkedIn. And now, oh, wow, now I got his personal email address. Now you see something that I preach over and over and over and over and over again about tools. Put on your detective hat. Pretend you're Hansel and Gretel. Follow the breadcrumbs. And it will lead you to a treasure of information. We started here targeting Apple, trying to find their iOS developers. We found one, we got their work email. We then used their name and, and the LinkedIn search tool to get to LinkedIn to find them. We then used Contact Scout to find personal email, their Pinterest account, their Facebook, their Twitter, their GitHub accounts. That's how you follow the breadcrumbs. That's how you can combine tools to find so much more information. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, well, I could have gone into LinkedIn and found this. Yeah, but would you have? They're a second level to me. What if they're third or fourth to you and then you're not using LinkedIn Recruiter? You may not find them. LinkedIn doesn't allow you to do that that easily anymore. So there's no guarantee you would find them. I've found people using the same methodology that if I try, if I try to search on them, through LinkedIn, without LinkedIn Recruiter, I couldn't find them. They wouldn't show up because I can't find them because they're not connected to me enough. Now in LinkedIn Recruiter, of course I can, but the problem is a lot of these, a lot of these people out there don't work in LinkedIn Recruiter, so there's no guarantee I would find all this other information. The only way to find them is to X-ray in because if you X-ray in, you can find pretty much, every, well, not everybody, but 95% of the people you can find. Here's a little hint, people with LinkedIn Recruiter you really don't have access to 100% of everybody. You have access to about 98%. There's still 2% you can't get to. They don't tell you that, but that's the truth. I know that straight from a developer's mouth. There's still a percentage of people, we even with LinkedIn Recruiter, you cannot get to. And there's a whole lot of big deal about that. I'm not gonna get into it, but just suffice to say that's LinkedIn's way of ensuring nobody has 100%. But anyway, so, so think about how we did that. Now, I, I remember somebody here is working for Microsoft, and it's just interesting that we did that because uh, Microsoft's right there. So let's see, let's pick on, uh, let's just do data, as in like data scientists, data, whatever. I think you guys got them. Oh my God, look at all those data scientists. Isn't that interesting? Let's pick on, I wanna pick on someone I don't know. I don't know if I know Lisa or not, I might. Okay, so I'm not worrying about the email, even though we have it. Let's go up here and let's use our LinkedIn search tool and find Lisa Song. I may know or I may not, I don't remember. There's a bunch of them, but you see that's, you know why this is okay? Well, first of all, it's right here, it's her. 
I could just as easily put data up there and it would narrow it down to three or four people. So there she is. So we started again in, 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 this, in this tool. We used the LinkedIn search tool to get to data scientists. Let me get rid of him because he's making a lot of noise. And now we're in her LinkedIn profile in Redmond. And let's see what we get. So 360 social still searching. It's not looking good. I see a one up there. That's usually not good. This particular tool didn't find anything. Contact Scout. 360 social didn't find anything. Let's see what they found Lisa Docs on email, which we already knew. Now let's see what this particular tool found. Nothing. So basically, this is a perfect example of what I was trying to explain to you earlier. In this case, without this tool, we probably don't find her easily, and we definitely don't find a way to connect with her. It all started here. And this is how we found the data scientist, which is really mind-boggling that Microsoft's not hiding its data scientists better. A lot of companies don't even call them data scientists. They call them program managers to hide them from recruiters. There's a whole about 30 or 40 companies in uh, California that will not call their data scientists data scientists because they're afraid recruiters will find them. So we just did that. So bing, bing, bing to the guy working at Microsoft. Yeah, we just found it. But that's what that tool does. And what I've done with it, just so you guys know, I don't play around. I have it sitting right here, so I just open it up immediately. I don't even go through Gmail anymore. I go right to the tool itself. So if you're, on a, if you're in a network that will not allow you to use Gmail, like Lockheed Martin, where I work, I can't use, it won't let me use Gmail because of security, but it still lets me get here. That's why I, I, as soon as I opened it the first time, I got right to the site. So I can go directly in and do what I want. And as you can see, I've looked at Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, my own company, Northrop Grumman. I've looked at all these places. And you'd be surprised the people you find and the names you find and the information you find. So we've got about 10 minutes. Are there any questions before I move on to some, some LinkedIn toys? On that last um, example, those companies in that drop down were initially, I think you were at Apple and you went to Microsoft and then were th how are I, they? I populated them because I searched is what I think you're getting ready. Okay. Yeah, let, yeah. let me use an example. If I do, let me see who haven't I done. If I type in Google, it goes out and finds the domains for me. Okay. Yeah. I just did them. Those are ones I've searched on before. And now you see Google is there. Those are just ones I've searched on before. So I pre-populated. So they were there already. Saved me from having to redo them over and over and over and over again. So that's how. Okay, cool. And don't let people, and don't let it fool you. See how this one says LockheedMartinJobs.com? That's not our mail server. Our mail server is something totally different. Uh, but it's really interesting in that, okay, what's going on here? Because it was working yesterday. That's not our mail server. Our mail server is something totally different. But unfortunately, that's what it finds. Lockheed, it, for some reason, it goes to the jobs domain. But yesterday when I was searching, and this might be, and I did tell Lockheed Martin, so it could be that they fixed it so it can't be done anymore. Yeah, they probably fixed it. It, um, uh, it was working yesterday, and it was allowing me to do stuff. So that's our actual mail server. But as you can see, that's also the mail server of somebody else. And so that's why for us it, it's a little difficult. Uh, so some com it won't do it for all companies, but it does it for the most of the biggies. It's really good with um, I mean, as an example, Northrop Grumman is a competitor of ours. I mean, really? <laughs> that's, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but for me, that's, uh, that's pretty good for someone like me. Now I just found all the job developers, and a lot of them are going to have security clearances, which is something that we look for. I mean, to me, this is gold. This is just literal gold. I can tear apart a company just by doing different email addresses or different titles and just start tearing into them one by one by one. Now, we're going to play, and I'm going to show you guys a few tricks. We're going to start without LinkedIn Recruiter. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a quick search. Um, no, I don't want to do that. Um, hang on a minute. Let me, I want to use Lazarus to get me something a little bit better than what I'm looking for. I hate their, I hate their auto population the way they do it. Yeah, that'll work. Lazarus is a tool that does a lot better job of remembering everything I type than than the auto populate in the search engines. That's why I use it. It does a much better job. So what we're going to do is we're going to narrow the search down to try to get a few less people than what I have because what I want to show you is pretty cool. You guys may know. Um, actually, that might work. So what we're going to do, we have this search. 
And as you can see, we've got this search, great. And we're gonna do, we're gonna go down and we're gonna populate the location area near. Now, the, the interesting part about this is, if I do 98042, which is where I live, the closest it'll let me get is 10 miles, the furthest it'll let me get 100. Okay, great, I'm gonna do 10 miles, just because I want to. And there's only one person, okay. So let me get rid of Hadoop, because I want more than one person in that range to, to get my point across. Let's see, that should add a few. Oh, it, it, it went back to the beginning. God, I hate this tool sometimes. Sometimes I really hate LinkedIn because they make life so difficult when they don't need to. Um, near 98042, let's go to 10 miles. There's no way there should be more than one person. There we go, nine, that works. But let's say I don't wanna be 10 miles. Well, the problem is they don't allow you to do more with it close than 10 or further than 100, but that doesn't mean we can't do it. So we're gonna use this tool, which is called Easy URL Parameters, and I'm gonna load the URL parameters in process. And the first thing I notice is right here, distance 10. What would happen if I change that distance to five? Let's see, let's add the new parameter, and now let's reload the page. Let's see what it does. We had nine. Oh, now we got 30, isn't that interesting? By changing it, we gained more people. Now that tells me that LinkedIn goofed in its search. There's no way I should go up. I should have gone down. But for some reason, LinkedIn has a problem with its search parameters for today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to 10 and see what happens. Uh, well, actually, we're going to reload the top one. Uh, we're going to change to 10. We're going to come down and make sure we didn't miss anything. We're going to add the new parameter and reload the page. And see, it's now saying 10, and it goes back to 9. Now, isn't that interesting? That says that LinkedIn has got a problem with its search parameters. So that means you can't believe what it's telling you. This is accurate. So what's going on here is LinkedIn is getting caught in something that gets caught in all the time between zip codes and cities. Not everybody uses a zip code when they sign up, and what happens is LinkedIn automatically populates the zip code with the largest population close. So if they put Seattle, it'll pick the zip code in Seattle with the largest population. And what's going on here with this search is because of the way we're doing it, we're overruling their stu basically their stupidity and their assumptions and getting real results. So that's what just happened here. But as you can see, you can actually get different than what it allows you. Like if I remember correctly, 100 was the furthest away it lets you go. Well, now we're going to see if it'll let us do 200. We're going to reload and the 200's here. And we're going to let it search because it's going to have to search. Look at that, 382 people. Hey, this Dean, is this is Liz um, Laird at Microsoft 2. Um, I just have a real quick question because you, you're going very fast. Sorry. Um, and it's, it's terrific stuff. But um, share, me, share with me, if you can, how you got back to this, this, this pull down. Is this part of the, that one tool that you're using? For yeah, okay. This? Okay, so, I'm sorry, it's so fast. Yeah, no, I understand. So let's start again. We're going to start with, with all we're looking for is Java, developer, and Jason within 100 miles of 98042, which is where I live, Kent, Washington. 200 people. That's what LinkedIn is showing. What we're going to do is this tool, easy URL parameter, is going to, we're going to go there and we're going to say use URL from the browser's current tab. You see, you have all this. This is what it says up here. So that matches what it's up here in this URL. Everybody with me? We're now gonna process the URL, which means it's basically looking in the URL for all of this pertinent information here. Here's the distance. I want more than 100 miles. I want 200 miles. Say the company that I'm looking for, Java developers for, is willing to relocate somebody as long as it, they're within 200 miles. We're gonna add the new parameter and reload the URL. You see how this? Distance up here has changed to 200, and look at the number. It went from 200 people to 382. LinkedIn doesn't allow you to do that. We're basically cheating LinkedIn. We're making LinkedIn do what we want instead of it doing what it wants. Thank you. Thank you. And just like it won't let you get closer than 10 miles, we can get closer than 10 miles. We can do either one. We have the power to make LinkedIn do what we want for a change, which for those of you that know anything about LinkedIn, that's nice to be able to do because <laughs> LinkedIn usually only lets you do what it lets you wants you to do. So what I'm going to do now, for those of you with a LinkedIn recruiter license, is show you a little trick using the same process, same procedures, and I'm going to sign into LinkedIn recruiter. 
and I'm going to go to a project folder I have with uh, some people in it. I hate going that way. Let's see, which project folder should we go into? Let's go into the supercomputing one. This was a search I was doing for supercomputing people because one of my people said, they, I've done everything. I can only find five people. Did you look on LinkedIn? Yeah, and you only found five people. That's interesting. I found 181. So one of us has got a problem. But that's another ball game. That's because he didn't do his research and realized there were other words that meant supercomputing besides supercomputing. I found out that's all he looked for, supercomputing. Well, there's a whole lot more words that mean the same thing. So I've got 181 people. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I would sure like not to have to check, go page by page by page through roughly nine pages. I think it's nine, eight pages, excuse me, of people just to see 181 people. We're going to play the game of easy URL parameter, and we're going to load the new URL and process it. And what we're going to see is page eight. Okay, well, let's change that to page one. Start at 175. Now, nah, let's start it at zero. Count. Mm, let's put 250. Let's add the parameter. Reload the page. You guys are going to love this. LinkedIn's so cool. They've tried to stop me from being able to do this, and they still haven't figured it out. Um, guess what, guys? All 181 of them are right here on one long page. Now you're probably saying, okay, so what? Well, here's why, so what? Oops. Do, 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 oops, wrong one. Let's see if my scraper program is working now. I'm going to have to probably figure out why it's not working. I'm going to have to reload it probably. Um, you can scrape this entire page now for all, all, these, all this information. It's really easy to do. And now you have them all on one long page. That's what's so big a deal. You don't have to spend, waste time going page to page to page. Um, I'm going to have to figure out why my scraper program is not working today. I scraped the first person. It's not scraping the rest of them. I'm going to end everything, which is fine. I'm not too worried about it. Um, let me just see what's going on here. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I'm going to have to find out why this, this tool isn't working right now. Um, but normally this tool, which is a scraping program, would scrape all this info for you nice, plain, and easy. For some reason, it's not working. I'm going to have to figure it out. But I don't know. Like I said, for me, I don't really care because it's really nice not to have to change pages. I got them all sitting here nice, pretty, and easy. I no longer have to worry about it. And that's what I like about, about that ability. It allows you to get them in one nice, long, straight line rather than having to go page by page, which takes time. And if the scraper program, data scraper, or, or data scraper was working, which for some reason it's not um, right now, um, it would be doing a good job. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do since I'm here, I'm going to actually remove it and find out what's going on with it. And then I'm going to reinstall it so you guys can see it. You get 500 pages. Oh, yeah, we already know that. I'm not worried about it. I'm not logging out. I'm, I'm going to go back here. And we're going to upload it again from the Chrome store and find out why for some reason it wasn't working and try to show you what it can do. There we go. Now it's here. Let's move it over here where I can see it a little bit better. Let's get back to my results over here and let's see if it's working now. It could be I've reached my limit for the, oh, there we go. Perfect. I love it. Sometimes that happens with Chrome extensions. You have to unload and reinstall them. So it's working. So let's see, not person search, not that search. You see, these are called recipes. Um, and so you got to find the right recipe for what you're looking for. People search logged in. Uh, okay. Um, let's try that again. And upload. Yep. There we go. Let me... Look at that, all nice and pretty. There's only 10, 10 pages, 10, 10 of them, but normally you'd get them all. And the reason you didn't is because I have to reload the page and get it all on the same sheet of music. And because it went back, here we go. That's the one with them all long and pretty. Now let's look at it. This is the one where I've changed it so that it's all nice, long, and one pretty, one, all 181 of them. We're going to go back to this. We're going to let it do its thing again. Data mining needs to reload the page before it can continue. Okay. Sometimes it has to reload a billion times. Let's do it this way then. Um, I'm playing with it. Sometimes you got to play with these tools to get them to work right. I was just doing this yesterday. That's what's irritating me. Here we go. Let's upload. Let God, LinkedIn, you're a pain in my butt. 
And now it just went back to its old, it just went back to the old, only a few on a page. Let me do it again. Let me reload the parameters. Process the URL, change this to one, change this to zero. Uh, the most I would recommend you do at a time is 250. If you do more than that, the, the page will mess up on you. Don't try to upload more than 250 in, 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 in one time. Um, I've noticed anything above that, but it's a hit and miss whether it'll work or not. And once you hit 300, it will not work. And that's just something within LinkedIn where LinkedIn's just on the back end or database or whatever isn't going to allow you to do something. So let's, let's go ahead and see if it'll work now. Now you'll notice there's a lot of recipes. The one I'm using may not be the one that'll work for this, for this. I don't know. No data available. So obviously that is not the right one for this particular search. Um, my LinkedIn personal, LinkedIn tab, view, scrape. Let's see if that one works. No data available. LinkedIn employee scrape, LinkedIn company industry, LinkedIn ad contact, LinkedIn people search logged in. No data. So it's one of those. You got to find the right one that'll get you the information you want. And that's what makes it so hard. Let's see if it's this one. But one of these, oh, well, the, one of these will find all these people and download them into a nice CSV like I showed you before. Basically, what you'll get is you'll get the same thing as, is, you'll get the same thing as if I did this. But you'll get all 181 of them. And for this one, I already know it's the bottom one. Yeah, you'll get this, basically but you get all 181 of them. You just gotta figure out the right recipe. Recipes change all the time, so sometimes it may not be the same one when you go from one to one to one. Sometimes they're different. Uh, so that's probably why I'm having a problem getting the right recipe. The recipes have changed a little bit, and I gotta figure out which one's the recipe that'll work. So let's do this. Let's right click. Let's do this. Data mine and get similar version. And yeah, now it's gotten just the first person, so that's why you need a recipe to make it work. But one of these recipes in here, once it pops down, will work. You just got to figure out which one it is. Um, and that's what makes it so hard is sometimes you just don't know which one it is and you got to remember them. It used to be the bottom one. Now the bottom one's not working. So that means they've made a change to it. Oh, well, there, that gets you the links. That's just not getting you all the other information you want. So it's just a matter of finding the right one. Works really well, though. Um, you just got to find the right one. So I don't want to keep trying because it'll take me forever. But anyway, so that's how you can get this, in, this whole big thing in a nice long big line and you can get them all and then you can start looking at them and save. So, I mean, to me, if, even if it saves you 30 seconds going from page to page, it's about how long it can take sometimes. This just saves you five minutes and it allows you to quickly download everything, quickly see what's going on and quickly get the information you want. A um, couple of things for those of you that don't have LinkedIn Recruiter. You'll notice I have Dean Costa visit two months ago, two months or four days ago on this person. Uh, this is a tool called Data Crew that allows me to leave notes in regular LinkedIn so that I know when I've already seen somebody and any notes I want to add about that person. Uh, and that, and it's a, it sits right here. You save your note. Um, as an example, if I save this and say test, save my note. Uh, note successfully saved. I come back out of this and let it reload. It's going to say, I just visited, see, test, and 20 seconds ago. If you don't have LinkedIn recruited, it's a good, easy, quick way of knowing whether or not you've already seen this person or not. Now, let's think about this a minute. I've already shown you you can x-ray into LinkedIn. You guys already knew that. Now I've shown you how you can leave notes. Now I'm going to show you how you can store people. We're going to go into Rahel Ephraim. This is called LinkedIn Storage. And we're going to get the LinkedIn profile. Ah, we got a problem. That probably means I already have it in there. That's probably the problem. So we're just going to go to LinkedIn Storage. I probably already have her in there. And we're going to wait a two. And look at these people that I've already saved. But here's the thing. You can create folders. Like there's my Java folder. And look at who I put in there. Now, let's think about this, man. LinkedIn Recruiter, the advantages are you can find people that you can't find regular LinkedIn. Well, you can do that x-raying. You, you can leave notes so you know what you're doing with them. Well, I just showed you how to do that already. And, that, and you can create folders and put people in them. I just showed you how you can do that too. So basically, everything that link, the only thing LinkedIn Recruiter gives you that this doesn't is the fact that you have in-mails. Well, frankly, with all the tools that I provide you, uh, you can find ways to contact these people. So do you really need it? I mean... If I'm not mistaken, uh, she's working at Expedia. Uh, profit, 
is looking for, look at all these emails Profit found for her. Let's look and see what this tool did. Has this tool found anything for her? Okay, nothing. But Profit found people, on, people uh, found contact information for her. So we already know how to contact her. So do we really need LinkedIn Recruiter? And that's one of the things that I've said over and over again. LinkedIn Recruiter is great. But if you have 40 recruiters, they don't all need LinkedIn Recruiter because most of what LinkedIn Recruiter does can be done without LinkedIn Recruiter. And I just, we just went through it. LinkedIn Recruiter lets you get at, thing, at people you can't without LinkedIn Recruiter, except by x-raying, which, which I showed you. LinkedIn Recruiter allows you to leave notes, which I've shown you how to do. And LinkedIn Recruiter allows you to have folders, which I just showed you how to do. So you can do all these things without LinkedIn Recruiter. You don't need LinkedIn Recruiter to do all these things. So don't think, I don't have LinkedIn Recruiter, and it's really hard for me. There's a thing on Facebook right now where, where some lady's having problems because she doesn't have enough licenses. Well, you don't need it. Right here, here's Henry Hugh. There's his LinkedIn page. There's his profile. You can leave comments for yourself. You can download the profile. That's what, LinkedIn, that's what LinkedIn Recruiter will let you do to stick it in a folder. Well, I created one called Java. I have one called General, too. I can create more of them if I want. So don't really need it. Um, LinkedIn Recruiter is great. I have it because Lockheed Martin gave it to me, but I don't need it. I can do almost everything LinkedIn Recruiter does without LinkedIn Recruiter. And that was some of the biggest keys uh, for LinkedIn Recruiter uh, that I wanted you guys to know about. There are th you can do almost everything that LinkedIn Recruiter lets you do without LinkedIn Recruiter, at least right now until they make changes. And, and I'm not sure how they can do it without really screwing up their ecosystem. So uh, it's 11 after 11. I've kept you guys a long time. I don't even know how many of you are still on. I'm sorry a few of the things I wanted to show you were um, – I had to reinstall them to make them work right. Uh, I hope you got something good out of it. Uh, are there any questions? Just, I have a question. This is Liz again. Um, regarding <laughs> that data recruit, putting those yeah. notes, you can put it into the LinkedIn. If you're a non-LinkedIn seat, you put it in there, and that is called data data. <laughs> Data recruit, and you'll be getting, yeah, you'll get that as part of the presentation. It'll, it'll say data recruit LinkedIn advanced fee. Right here is Raphael, Raphael's information. Okay. And there's yeah. my note. Three minutes ago, I visited, I visited them. Um, I don't think I've visited any of these others. So now the only thing is only you can see it. It's not like you can share it with your whole team. Only you will be able to see it. But it doesn't matter if you're not link, doing it on LinkedIn recruiter license. You know, it really probably doesn't much matter. Uh, but it's really cool. Uh, let you do some really, really good stuff. Now, a couple of things real quick, unless there's other questions. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's certain pieces of information that I have on this on people's LinkedIn profiles you guys might not get to see always. Um, as an example, and you guys should know this because I've talked about this before, is I actually get their real zip code. And there's a tool called uh, LinkedIn zip code that will actually show you their actual zip code, assuming they put one in there. If not, it'll be the zip code or the largest population of the city they entered. That's just something to think about. It's a cool tool. It does come in handy, especially if you're researching to try to find people in a given geo and you keep seeing the same zip code over and over again. That tells you something. So um, any other questions? Um, I will try to figure out which recipe is the right recipe to... Um, to pull the people from, um, once you use that this trick here to get them all on one page, I will figure out which recipe it is that that's the correct recipe and let you guys know. Um, like I said, there's a boatload of these recipes and sometimes it's a little hard to tell which one's which. Um, I'm not sure which one it is because they do update and change the recipes. Like this says no available. That means that recipe is no longer valid and it hasn't been removed yet. So I have to figure out which one's the right one. It could be any of them. It could be none of them now. Uh, I know it used to be one of these. It used to be look just like this, but I don't see it now. And that just could be because I don't have, you know, I, I, haven't, up, I haven't updated the recipe list in a while. So I probably need to update the recipe list, which means just logging out, logging back in. So, but it's, this is a really good tool. And this works everywhere. And I think I've shown you this already. Um, but, I kept saying something about X-raying into LinkedIn, um, and that's something everybody here could be able to know how to do and needs to know how to do, uh, because if you don't, you're, you're really selling yourself short. Let's copy this, and let's go into uh, X-raying into LinkedIn is a site command. Most of you probably know that. 
Um, I always do the slash end just because most of them are. It could also be a pub, but you, you never know. What I always try to do when I X-ray in, since I'm X-raying in, I always try to get some type of an email address. And there's 37 people that have a Gmail email address. Some of them even have phone numbers, uh, which is all really cool. And the data scraper program, I think I showed you this earlier, um, will actually get you that result. Um, you just, again, it's a, it's a matter of finding the right uh, recipe that will do it for you. As you can see, you get all these recipes. Now, this should be one that says LinkedIn here, but it doesn't. And that tells me that um, they, I have to redo all my uh, recipes and get them working again. So, but I think I showed you earlier where it did work and, and, and everything. So that, that's uh, always a good way to go. But you, sometimes you got to play. And as you can see, if the recipe isn't there, you just highlight one and it grabs them all. Um, there's 37 of them, which I believe is all of them. And their Gmail addresses are all visible. So it still works. Pretty good. This tool here is called search dash preview. It lets me look at them without having to open them. So I don't have to waste time. I can look and decide if I really like them or not. So saves you some time. I probably save an hour or two every day just by not just by having this available to me and not having to open each one and going back and forth and forth and back. And that's it. Any other questions, comments? Hello. Yeah, this was valuable. Thanks so much, Dean. I think this is pretty valuable for me. Well, I appreciate that and you're welcome. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Y'all are recruiters, so finding my email address should be real easy. It's all over my LinkedIn page. If you have questions or something doesn't work right, call me, uh, email me. I'll make time to spend time to talk to you and, 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 to make, and to try to get it all working right. Once I find out the right recipe for the LinkedIn one, I'll, I'll share it with you. Like I said, I suspect I just need to reload the tool again because some of the recipes have changed and that's, and it'll work, right? So. Dean, thank you so much for this presentation. This dance piece in the course. Um, we'll get the recording copy to our YouTube page, get it out to everybody so they can review this at their leisure when they have time. And as Dean just volunteered, please contact him directly with questions that result from, from that review, I'm sure. Because Dean did fly through quickly that there are more questions that you'll have. And, uh, and, uh, it's a very gracious gentleman who's willing to respond. All right. And if that's it, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Uh